Hi guys, Benjamin here with Lund Solar Systems. Hi, Faye here. Looking to take a few moments of your time and talk to you about camera choices for your Lund Solar Telescope. Now, a lot of people when going into solar viewing are also wanting to do some imaging with their setup. So here's how best to choose uh, what's going to work for you. To get started, first thing, let's talk about the blocking filter size associated with your telescope. Generally, if you like to do photography or if you're planning on doing photography, we suggest going with the biggest blocking filter size available so it gives you the most room around the disk of the sun itself. That's right, and each of our scopes is going to have a couple of options for a blocking filter. For instance, say we're talking about an LS100, you have the B1200, B1800, or even a B3400 possibility with that scope. Where some of our smaller scopes, such as the 40 or the 50, only have a 4 or a 6 or a 5, respectively. Another important consideration aside from choosing your blocking filter will be your selection and camera choice. Now, we tend to recommend CCD cameras specifically for your telescope, but if you happen to have an alternative type, such as a DSLR, you're welcome to try it. And that's very true. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, so just feel, please feel free to, to go for it. Uh, but we do recommend monochrome CCD, if at all possible, because that is going to give you the best image quality. And a lot of that is based off of the way it attaches to the camera and how close you're going to be from the camera window to the blocking filter optic. And you'll see that in most cases, you'll have a few different points you can connect your camera to our blocking filter uh, naturally, let's say. There's two normal points we suggest. Either at the top of your eyepiece cup, you'll see threading that is T-threading, or just under it as well. That's also part of why we suggest a CCD camera. You probably can't see it, but this camera actually has T-threading built into it. So it's very easy to attach in that sense. Whereas with the DSLR, you might have a camera bump or other functionality buttons that might get in the way from what you're trying to do. And that's a great point. And we do make uh, any of our blocking filters in a straight through configuration uh, in instances of using a DSLR or some sort of other equipment that might interfere uh, because of a camera bump or something like that. So we do have options for you as well. Before we let you guys go, one last important thing to talk about, and that is the image size that's produced naturally by the scope as well. It's very important to make sure to choose a camera that has a sensor that covers the image size of your scope if you're looking for full disk. If full disk isn't quite your thing, then maybe it's not such a big deal, but if you're impressed by some of our stunning photos out there, you can see everything, make sure your camera sensor covers the image size your scope produces. That's right, and all of that information is available on our website under each product listing, so please go ahead and check that out. And if you like these videos today, please like and subscribe so you can see more. Thank you, guys.